So, what it comes down to, my opinion, there was a viewer request, like I get, I get many of those, um, viewer request is, what my opinion is on the status of destination charging in North America. And and I I'll say North America. Uh, I really should just be saying USA, uh, but I did venture a little bit into Canada uh, in 2014. That's a while ago, but uh, surprisingly, uh, there was plenty of charging. Uh, and I've gone coast to coast. Number of road trips, stayed a lot in the Midwest. Now, we don't have as much charging in the Midwest as you do along the East and the West coasts. And the reason being is I have no clue. But we do have charging. Now, when I got my car back in 2013, uh, we only had a couple of J1772s in Milwaukee County here in Wisconsin. And we probably had maybe five or six J1772 30 amp stations in the whole state. And we had one Chatemo station. That was, uh, of course, I couldn't use that. And that was at ABB, and they're the ones that make the stations, even though that station, I have, I don't think I've ever seen. Okay, iced tea. I don't think I've ever seen that ABB station actually online. It's always broken, which means, to, to me, if ABB can't get their own station they manufacture to work, why would I trust them with my business? To, for me, giving them, I don't know, what, 50 grand to buy one? It makes absolutely no sense. Mm. Tasty ice cream. So, that was then. Um, if you go back into the history books, or the history of my videos, um, you can actually see me using one. It was at a AAA service center here in, in, in Milwaukee. Um, it's still there. It still works. 30 amp, 208 volts with some, of course, the usual nasty uh, voltage drop. You know what? We didn't have like six. We had a little bit more than that. And the reason being is, I, you know, I, I always forget the fact that it's in uh, Nissan car dealers. Uh, a lot of them had the uh, the uh, had to install the aero aero environment um, for Nissan uh, North America's um, requests. Um, although most of them would not let you charge if you didn't drive a a Leaf and b buy it from them, so they were pretty much useless anyways for most people. And a lot of them weren't even turning them on. They had them installed physically just to say that they were installed um, or put in. And then they'd never turn the power on or they'd turn the power off um, uh, when a dealer vehicle wasn't using it. So that way you'd have to go inside and then they'd say, oh, did you buy it from us? No. Well, of course, things have changed a little bit. Uh, so basically, I was kind of landlocked in Wisconsin. I had... Pretty much, I mean, other than taking a massive multi-day trip and spending nights at RV parks to charge up, um, I was pretty much landlocked. Uh, my, my usual drive is from uh, Milwaukee to Wisconsin Dells, approximately 128 miles from door to door. So with a 60 kilowatt battery, uh, it was doable during the summer. And during the winter, with heat, uh, I was sweating bullets trying to make that work. But now we have superchargers, which are great. But the problem still comes down to, if you travel to a, a, a far-off city, what do you do? Where do you charge? 
120 volt plug is fine if you're spending a week someplace or if you're fairly close to a supercharger. Uh, as example, uh, back in 2013 when I got my car, there were no charging stations within about 60 miles of the Midwest's largest tourist city, Wisconsin Dells. So my family put in a NEMA 1450 outlet. That was for me mostly. But we had so many people wanting to use it because there was nothing. Now we had the biggest tourist city around. You could get there, but you couldn't get home unless you're, like I said, you're staying for a week. And even yet, even today, with, with all the, the stations, it's still a almost impossible drive for a Nissan Leaf. I mean, it's it's something you really got to plan out for. Uh, nowadays, for a Tesla, it's no problem. I mean, in 2013, it, our, our 1450 outlet was so busy, we actually had to take reservations for it. Which, of course, it was nice that um, Tesla then came out with the destination charging program and gave us two high-power ball stations. Uh, but then also at the same time, they put a supercharger 20 miles north. Why they put it 20 miles north in a tiny little city where there's nothing to do, Boston, um, instead of in the big tourist city and having those nice Tesla logos right at the exit of the freeway system at the outlet mall there, um, I'd never know because uh, just having that sitting there with people charging would have been such an insanely great way to advertise the Tesla brand and showing you that people actually do. I mean, come on, it's the biggest tour city in the Midwest. Uh, but that's, that's a whole other story. Well, at least now, you know, we got some high power wall stations, a few other motels and hotels there. Got them too. I think there's uh, three businesses now that have high powered stations in the Dells. But now you're also seeing J1772s pop up all over the place. Uh, and with Tesla's destination charging program, you know, giving away free stations. Uh, once you put the word free in front of the station, you know, it's that you know, business. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. You know, I get somebody to, to, to charge their car. Yeah, it costs a little, a little bit on electricity, but now they just spent a hundred bucks a night on a room. Where it only costs five, ten bucks to recharge their car. They factor things in, you know. And if all they're doing is passing through, they're not going to be staying at that hotel uh, for too long of a period of time either, you know. But if they, I mean, and if they are staying a long period of time, you get the major charge the one night, and they really don't suck down too much the rest of the night. Um, now, going uh, pretty much coast to coast, um, the, believe it or not, the the hardest place I could it was to find charging was. Oregon and that's because we went up by Crater Lake to Train Mountain a lot of you have seen my uh, my uh, West Coast road trip video uh, and we actually I actually ended up finding at Oregon Tech uh, they had an 80, 80 amp uh, Cl uh, Clipper Creek uh, Sun Country Highway um, uh, J1772 station that was not on plug share, so I put that in there. I don't know if someone just went and deleted it. There's a little, I was a little surprised that it wasn't on there. Uh, so put that on there. Uh, spent a few hours there. Modified a uh, 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 one of the Tesla plugs so I could use a different style outlet out of necessity. So I was able to plug in at 120 volts and charge at 24 amp at uh, Train Mountain. Uh, that was a lifesaver. If I didn't do that, we would have had to stay an extra day because the hotel, uh, the Super 8 we stayed at, had absolutely zero 120 volt outlets outside. I asked management, we walked all the way around the place. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, so that was, that's one area that could have could be using some. But just, just in the last two years, it has gone from practically nothing to tons and tons of charging locations everywhere. Um, can we use more? 
yeah, yeah I, I think we could still use quite a bit more. But I think, to be realistic, just in my experience driving a Tesla, of course, now if you're driving a, a, a low range EV like a Ford Focus EV, a Mitsubishi I, your, your Nissan Leaf, um, uh, of course, they, they need to plug in almost every chance they get. Whereas the Teslas don't, I mean, I'm going to be doing a 128 mile drive right now on a whim. Um, I'm not even start, I didn't even start the day off with a full battery. Um, but the, the low range ones, yeah, those those are going to be hurting I, for a long time. Now, if we got rid of all the low range ones, and I'm speaking hypothetically right now, Personally, the situation for destination charging right now is pretty darn good. Um, there isn't too much need to to really expand destination too much. What we need to expand is DC fast charging in some way, shape, or form. Uh, we got to the point, we did the J1772, we did the 30 amp at 208 volts, where full charge is 12 hours. We've been there, did that. It sucked, so we built cars that could go further on a charge, so we didn't need to sit at those stations. Enter the Tesla supercharging network, coast to coast travel, fully possible. But now we need in city. DC charging. Uh, I mean, just the feasibility of just having cars randomly sit around charging all night while you're on vacation really reduces the usefulness. Uh, it needs to be like supercharging. You plug in, 20 minutes, you're done, you go, you, you, on with your life. Um, some locations on, on my road trip, it was like people were camping out at these stations. Even the high-powered wall stations were from zero to one, uh, 100 percent three and a half hours. That charging at 80 amp is fully doable uh, for road trips and vacation. Anything, uh, once you're down to 40 amp at two, and I'm talking at 240 volt, not that's 208 crap. Uh, unfortunately, that's what a lot of commercial businesses have. And so you, well, I guess you're stuck with what you got. Yeah, I guess even at 208 volts, it's about 8.9, 8.8 kilowatts, roughly, depending on the voltage, say. Uh, and I, I, you can make it work. Um, it would have worked out great if we have a lot more of those around. But it's even even a, a 50 kilowatt Chademo station, now that the Model S can use the Chademo um, with the Chademo adapters, um, now if we, um, I'd say uh, the DC combo adapter would be nice too. But if you look, let's take a step back and look, all, almost all the DC combo stations also have a Chademo. So we're kind of covered there. So why carry um, that extra adapter if you don't need to? Vinny, will you stop grabbing for that? Why do you never stop yeah 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 when I'm on the camera? Uh, where was I? So I mean even even conveniently placed Charimo stations. Uh, major sit in major cities would be perfect. Don't need supercharger level. Or if since cost is a major factor, instead of putting, uh, I, don't, I don't know about the, the tech behind it, of course Tesla might have to work out some, some uh, tech details on it, but instead of having uh, one supercharger power two, st two stalls, uh, have one supercharger power three or maybe four, um, and have it, you know, just like it is now, um, self-adjust to shuttle the power back and get priority to first the first person that plugs in and shuttle it around as, as, as needed. Um, I think that could greatly reduce uh, installation costs. 
Um, I think Tesla already stole, uh, stole, sold many superchargers like that uh, to some gentlemen in uh, Europe, I believe. Um, I forgot what country exactly. But basically it was a, a, a 60 kilowatt supercharger uh, split, and then that split to do two, two stalls, two stations. Perfect. I mean, 50 kilowatts, great. While it's not as fast as a supercharger, we can still maintain that 50 kilowatt rate for quite a while. You can get up. I mean, it's 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 not bad. I, I think I forgot what my uh, my my full charge time was to get to 80 percent, but it was it was bearable. It's doable. Something you can really just sit in the car and do without worrying too much, or just get in, plug in, or pull up, plug in. Go to McDonald's down the street, come back, and your car is good enough to get you going. So, I mean, it doesn't take much. It just has to be faster than what we got now. Uh, now that the Model X is re uh, released, um, apparently uh, I'm, I'm hearing uh, that the Model X does not have dual charger capability. But what it has is instead of two 10 kilowatt onboard chargers, it has a single, what is it, 72 amp charger. So instead of two 10 amp, uh, two 50 amp charge, two 40 amp chargers, it has a single 72 amp charger. I could be off on that a little bit. Um, I have, I have, I, I gotta get my hands on a Model X just at least review and test out. So. Uh, it's nice that they're they're kind of consolidating. I'm sure that brings production costs around. And I really think that, at least on the Model S, the dual charger should have been standard. Uh, for how cheap it would have been to install a factory and the cost of it, roll it into the cost of the car. Not everybody's going to use it, no. But the one or two times that you might need it, God, it's a lifesaver. Um, I can honestly say before I had the dual chargers installed on my car, uh, such as my Niagara Falls trip, uh, where there was uh, 80 amp Sun Country Highway stations, uh, or 70 amp at the time, now they're 80 amp, they've been upgraded. Uh, the trip would have and could have, could have and would have taken a completely different turn, and the enjoyment factor would have went up exponentially. We might have did a, a day ride into Toronto and back, but I, I couldn't risk it because I needed to build up my charge every night uh, to make sure I had enough to attempt to make it back to, uh, uh, was it Maumee? Maumee, Ohio? No. I know there's one in Cleveland now. of you might have remembered that fiasco, uh, especially at the uh, the stop up in between. Instead of having to wait for six hours to get enough to make it, mind, mind you, it was friggin' cold out, so we had to keep going. I was doing 45 on the freeway. It was only 200 miles to get from Niagara Falls to the supercharger, and uh, even after sitting for six hours at a high power uh, at a, a, a J 1772 at the halfway mark in Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, I still I still came up short. Uh, of course, the uh, pack heater kicking in on a dead battery did not help. If it didn't do that, I probably would have I would have had enough to make it that extra three miles. Uh, whole other story, though. So I I can keep rambling like this all night. Basically, what it comes down to is I think in, across most of the U.S. In the major, all the major cities already have some portion or some manner of destination charging that's good enough for just overnight destination charging. Even though overnight destination charging still kind of sucks. What we need is DC fast charging of some sort, whether it be Chatemo or Supercharger. And I'm sorry, I'm just not a fan. I, well, I don't like Chatemo. Uh, it's cheap to imp cheaper to implement. I mean, if you go with the Nissan subsidy program, you're talking as low as like 7,500 bucks now for the station, and then whatever the installation costs are for your specific location. 
Um, it needs to be something like that, at least one in every major city, uh, to be able to just pull in, do something cool. And I, I, I guess that's that's really just kind of my my opinion. Um, I'm sure the more I think about it, I, I come up with other scenarios and whatnot. But as long as we keep pushing towards long range electric vehicles, if not the and not you know range challenged ones like sorry to pick on it, Nissan Leaf is yeah, the most popular. There's absolutely no reason the Nissan Leaf only does 80 to 100 if you're lucky 100 miles on a charge. Absolutely not. Um, and to be honest, if the car did 150 on a charge, I probably would have ended up buying that instead of a Tesla. Uh, I'm glad I bought the Tesla. Uh, but the Tesla, I mean, don't need the performance. The major... Yeah. Well, well, the Tesla is the most awesome vehicle ever. The major selling point was the range. Uh, while it's a nice interior, it's not a luxury interior. While it's a nice ride, it's not a luxury ride. The body looks freaking awesome. Basically, what I'm saying is the Model S, and I think just from my, from what I've seen so far, the Model X as well. Model S and the Model X are a full premium luxury priced vehicle, but not quite the luxury quality. Uh, you're paying Tesla price for uh, Nissan Leaf quality. And even then, Nissan's got reliability down a little bit more than uh, the Model S. It's, uh, tonight I had a little bit of a dr drive unit scare, um, had a little shutter at a stop. And then in a parking lot, it lost power, the drive unit lost power, and got the warning, restart car to, restart vehicle to continue driving, something along those lines. I tried getting a snapshot of it, but it disappeared too quick. So it looks like I'll be due for drive unit number four, and this last one was a revision P and brand new. So... Whatever they're doing to try and fix these drive unit issues, it's just not doing it. And uh, I'll admit my first drive unit, when I first got the car, I really gave, I shouldn't say gave, gave the car a thrashing. I didn't, you know, go out of my way to damage anything. But, uh, you know, new car, you want to drive, see what it can do, fine. That novelty kind of wore off a bit. And, uh... Pretty much now, I mean, I'll do some power excels from a stop stoplight. I'm not abusing the crap out of my drive unit. I'm not going to the track. I'm just one. I'm driving A to B, and most of it's uh, as you're watching on this camera, uh, which is kind of neat because you guys are watching me, and you can see the uh, screen on that camera watching the road, which is also on the picture in picture in this video. Okay, Mandy. Oh my gosh, demanding little man. Uh, as you can see. Most of my driving is freeway driving. I get on the freeway and not stop. I just keep going and going and going. Like the Energizer Bunny. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not beating the heck out of it. And still I managed to be killing these drive units. Uh, I had a battery pack failure. Uh, I'm, on, I'm on drive unit number three, but depending on what they the service center says I might be getting number four. Uh, door handles, windows, uh, cooling fans, cooling pumps. Uh, I got 72,000 miles on here. Uh, ball joint was done at 53,000. Uh, uh, struts were just done at about 68,000. Uh, I got corrosion under my hood and bubbling the paint uh, where the steel coupler is. Although since I'm out of outside my factory original factory warranty, that's not covered with the ESA. 
you know what, I'm getting into a completely different uh, different video now. Um, so I'm going to cut that off. Got to stop talking about that. That's, that's, uh, that's for another one of my rant videos uh, where I wish they'd just replace this thing with a with one that doesn't have to go in every three weeks to a month for service. Anyways, back to um, destination charging. Uh, let's just try and fill in, at least for now. We got The major cities are good. We're, we're, we're decent in all the major cities right now. There's businesses to plug into. Now we got to start start talking and try and get the smaller cities, the smaller, smaller locations uh, to get uh, destination chargers. And then the major cities, we got to start working on trying to get DC fast charging of some flavor in the major cities. I got you. That's right, Vinny. So I'm going to end the rambling now. I have done this rambling 26 minutes. Hold Toledo, Ohio. Uh, and once again, I got a new lapel mic. Uh, hopefully uh, it helps you guys hear me I'd like to hear some feedback if uh, if you if you think this helps during uh, my car drives uh, I just went with a wired one I'm not going to get all technical with a wireless just more stuff to go wrong driving get interference and voice cuts out and now videos ruin so on and so forth so uh, what do you think about destination charging? Let's go that route. Uh, so get, let me know what you think. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit more and get, get your opinions. I'd like to start incorporating my viewers a little more into my videos. Um, so I'd like to uh, uh, do kind of like little feedback sessions now on. Uh, and I'll incorporate that into my, my Friday night news and update videos. Oh, the meatball just fell asleep. Hey, Vinny. Yes, buddy. What you looking at? And you know what really stinks about a drive unit failure right now? It is version 7 of the firmware just came out, and it sucks royally, and I'm avoiding installing it. And if I go in for service, especially a drive unit, if it was something minor, like a pump, or a door handle, I think I could get away with them not updating it. But drive unit, there's no way they're going to do a drive unit without updating the firmware. So I'm going to have to be forced to have a piece of crap known as version 7 of the firmware shoved down my throat with the royally crappy user interface. I'm sorry guys at Tesla, you screwed up on that one. See my weekly update video uh, for uh, more comments on the version 7. So, alright, I gotta stop. Uh, so don't forget, like and subscribe. And uh, uh, let's hear your comments. See your comments down in the uh, comment section of the video. And uh, stay tuned for upcoming Friday uh, news and update videos as uh, if you haven't seen it, seen any of them yet, uh, we're gonna be I'm doing contests and giving out mer free merchandise, t-shirts, gear, Tesla gear, uh, sponsored products from uh, companies that sponsor my channel. Uh, I'm trying to make a make this part of my living since uh, um, I had to close my shop to take care of my midgets last year. So YouTube is now a, a good portion of my income. So I do have to have sponsors now and and uh, do some some reviews. You know, I, I gotta make ends meet and to, and to keep for giving you guys uh, information and content. I gotta keep. I gotta do what I can. So uh, thanks for watching and everybody have a wonderful evening. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the ride. Uh, at the same time here, I had some requests uh, from people saying, well, we don't want, well, it's nice listening or seeing your face the whole time. We also want to kind of see the scenery around you. So, well, uh, do a video. Maybe I could do a, another camera at the back. I just figured out how to do multi-cam with my uh, editing software. It's really cool. I hit a button and uh, it automatically syncs up all the audio. And what you do 
is uh, you start each camera and then uh, a good way to do it is you clap and then what happens is that audio spike shows up on the, uh, the timeline and then the computer can automatically sync sync the, uh, the spikes in audio so it knows where the two sections of video go together. Vinny, you little mischievous little munchkin, you. How do you?